In this video, we're going to talk about equations and expressions. There's the objective. So a vocabulary is equation and expression, obviously. So an equation is a math sentence that'll have numbers and signs, signs meaning addition signs, subtraction, multiplication, division signs. It also includes an equal sign. That's an equation. You might be able to tell the diff I mean the uh, the connection between the word equation and the fact that it always includes equal signs. An expression is not a sentence. Okay, if we can talk about grammar here, it's not a mathematical sentence. We'll call it a fragment because it does have numbers and signs, but it doesn't equal anything. All right? So we don't put the equal sign in an answer. Uh, so, they're very similar, as you can see, but one will have the equal sign, one will not. All right, for our example, let's actually use a word problem to think through uh, an expression. So, the, f the first thing that uh, I typically will notice when I'm reading a word problem is what is the question. So, I actually start at the end. Which expression? Expression represents the situation. All right, so we're going to have to read the problem to figure out what the situation is, and we'll write an expression. Expression does not have an equal sign. All right, so we're going to write a mathematical fragment. Using his Uber vision, American lad spotted a huge collection of asteroids headed for the Earth. All right, that's good for the story, but doesn't really include any information that we can use right now. In a flash, he flew into space to stop them. All right fun but doesn't help us there were 78 clusters with 691 asteroids in each cluster okay all right now we're getting to some good stuff here with one swipe of his uber rays he destroyed 1504 asteroids and we need to write an expression well i'm going to start with the first thing that they talked about which was the number of clusters and the number of asteroids in each one. So what would we do to figure out how many asteroids were headed for the Earth? Total. Okay, even if some of them were grouped together, it doesn't matter. I want to know how many total. All right, so obviously that sentence gives us a good chunk of this problem because it tells us how many asteroids are coming. A lot. Right, that is definitely a multiplication problem. There are 78 clusters, and each one of them have 691 asteroids. That's a lot. With one swipe of his uber rays, he destroyed 1,504 asteroids. Destroyed them. So mathematically, it makes sense that we would subtract the ones that were destroyed. There's nothing else in the problem. This is it. So if we wanted to know how many asteroids were still coming our way, we could solve this problem. But we're looking for an expression, so we can stop here. That is That would be your answer right there. All right, another one. Again, I'm going to go to the question down at the bottom here, and it says, which equation... Okay, that makes sense because all of them have equal signs in the answers. Can be used to find G, whatever G is. In this case, it tells us G is the amount of money the atomic spitball spent on rides. Okay, so we're trying to figure out how much that they spent on rides. And we're going to use one of these mathematical sentences or equations to figure it out. Now, before I solve this, let's take a moment to talk about a little bit more vocabulary. Let's talk about the word variable. So, in math, we use variables in place of a missing value, right? So, we'll use a letter in place of a missing value, right? That's, that's, that's a huge part of algebra later on in your mathematical career. So, instead of using blanks or boxes, Right? As we work our way up in math, we start to use variables. So we'll use these letters. And I have a few examples off to the side there. All right, so 
in our problem, G is a variable, but we know what it means, okay? It's the amount of money that they will spend on rides. All right, so after battling the sinister fiends, the atomic spitballs went to the state fair to have some fun. All together, all together, that's important, right? We know what the word all together means. Typically, we will add things all together. You could multiply, depending on the problem. All together is definitely going to give you a bigger amount. All together, they spent $128. They spent $45 on tickets and $37 on food. They spent the rest of it on rides. All right, so let's chunk this. All together, they spent $128. All of our answer choices have 128 as the total. So God, we can't eliminate any of them right now because they all have the 128. Now, typically, we will see equal 128 on the right-hand side or on the end of our equations. But in this problem, it's at the beginning. doesn't matter doesn't matter all right they spend $45 on tickets and $37 on food all right okay so what we could do what we could do is we could take the total 128 and we could subtract what they spent on tickets we could also subtract what they spent on food and we would get the leftover and the leftover would tell us how much they spent on rides. So if you take 128 and you subtract 45 and then you subtract 37, you'll get 46. So 46 is the amount that they spent on rides. But that's, that's not the answer to our problem. That's not even what they're asking for, right? So since I said all together, they spent 128. That would mean if I took the three amounts and added them together, I would get 128. And I figured out the 46 by doing a little bit of subtraction, right? So 46 plus 45 equals 37. Or no, plus 37 equals 128. So which of these sentences comes closest to our little, uh, you know, our solution well it's gonna be D so instead of using subtraction or anything like that they're treating it as a straight addition problem all together they spent hundred twenty eight dollars so the amount that they spent on rides which is G plus the amount that they spent on tickets plus the amount they spent on food would give you the total so it really is a, an addition problem with a missing value 